Yet for all the telltale signs that our economy is slowing, the housing market is still astonishingly robust. And that message is that with high immigration levels, a shortage of housing and higher rental prices, it's likely to continue. And as REA Group Chief Executive Owen Wilson explained to me this week, there's a pretty good reason for all that. It has been incredibly strong. Uh, and I think if you, if you went back a year and, and, and looked forward, we weren't predicting this level of strength. I think it's underpinned by a couple of things. I think it's the record low unemployment we've seen continuing through. People have still got jobs. Uh, and I think the other thing, the other factor that's come into play here is the record levels of immigration that we've had. You know, most of that immigration ends up in Melbourne and Sydney, so it was no surprise to us that the Melbourne and Sydney markets were, were much stronger than the rest of Australia. But as Australia's, you know, premier listings uh, site, you've also got the benefit of rising prices. So the yield that you get from those rising prices has also improved. Uh, well, we don't actually price according to the value of the property. Uh, what we have seen this year, though, is we put through a 13% price increase on the value of, the, of, of what we're delivering to our, our customers and the vendors in the market. Plus, we've seen a big increase in our audience lead over our competition. So we're delivering more of the leads, more of the buyers uh, to agents when they're selling properties. So I think that has underpinned um, a very strong result. So the one thing you said at the beginning of the financial year, you wouldn't have been as ambitious as what these results now show. As you sit here today and look out 12 months, are you equally as ambitious? What's your own senses of the next 12 months? Oh, look, we're, we're very uh, confident about the state of the property market going forward. Uh, you know, it's so strong with, in this current rate environment. And I think most people would say that we're either at or very near the peak in interest rates. At worst case, I think we might get one more, but I think this property market would take one rate increase in its stride. You then factor in uh, the tax cuts that are coming in July, in July and, and again, many economists would say the impact of those tax cuts are probably the same as, as to rate cuts. So you've got the tax cuts coming in and then uh, you know, the predictions are that rates will begin to fall at some stage next calendar year. So if you look out 12 or 18 months, the, the things that have underpinned the strength in our market, I think are even going to get better. We've still got immigration happening. We've still got, you know, fairly low unemployment. You'll have wage rises coming through probably from July. So all the factors are there uh, for a good property market. And while those prices stay at these sort of record levels, vendors are confident that if they bring a property to market, it will sell. And while we're seeing that demand, that's going to be the case. And there's also the chronic shortage of housing in Australia, which is a fundamental issue, which, as you say, tips that supply and demand situation or equation um, very much in the seller's favour. It does. Uh, we do have a chronic shortage of housing in Australia. We need a lot more construction of every type of property, whether it be house and land and apartments. I think at some stage that is going to turn. The things that have stopped development around construction costs and labour availability are starting to ease. And while that demand is still there, eventually new builds are going to come out of the ground. It may require a bit of government stimulus to get it started, but at some stage it's going to turn and we're going to build more, more supply. Does it trouble you that we're about to go into the, the budget and you've got the Reserve Bank really warning people that there could be future interest rate rises and yet you've got a federal budget that could come out in the next week, not only through those tax cuts, but by other spending measures that could be adding to inflation? That's right. And, and, and even the property market itself is, is contributing to inflation. You know, rent forms a big part of the, the CPI calculation and, and rents have been going up strong double digit due to that lack of supply. And so that's kind of becoming a circular uh, problem in that you know, rents are going up, which causes inflation to go up, which may cause interest rates to go up. So, you know, anything that, that causes rates to go up will potentially have a negative impact on the market. But as we sit here today, I think, you know, at, at worst, we're looking at one more rate rise. And for a company such as REA Group, even if there is a supply-side uh, response, in other words, builders somehow get their mojo back and start to build, the reality is that your company is going to have every one of those listings on your site. That's pretty much the way in which this works. Hey, spot on, Ross. Uh, look, the, the, the new build segment, both house and land and developer, that's the second largest segment for REA. And that has been in the doldrums for about four, year now, four years. We've seen 
uh, reductions year on year on year of the number of developments coming out of the ground. If that turns, that, that will be a nice tailwind for us. I'll tell you what, Owen Wilson, great to chat to you today. Many thanks for your time. Oh, thanks, Ross. It's been a pleasure.